closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Interactive Brokers. Deep discount, direct access. 90 plus markets worldwide. Big market swings have been a major theme in 2011, but our next guest says there are ways investors can protect themselves against intraday volatility, intra-week volatility as well. Diana Avigdor, Vice President, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital joins us right now. Um, it's been a tough year and, uh, you know, intraday, intra-week, intra-month uh, volatility what is the strategy? Let's start with that. So, um, you know, there is a theme for everybody, the bulls, the bears. And the interesting thing in this, in this short term uh, of last few days is that <clears throat> when you talk to the bulls, they say, oh, sure, the market sell can sell off because we're at a, uh, a level, a technical level where we can hit against resistance. And when we, you talk to the bears, they say, oh, sure, we can rally into year end. So you have people um, talking both sides of the trade. But what's for sure is that intraday volatility and intraweek volatility is extremely high. And um, from a trading perspective, there are ways that you can protect yourself from that. The themes on the bull side, we have great economic data, um, great, relatively good economic data, better than expected, both here in North America and in, and in Europe. And that's, a, are, that's the interesting aspect. In Europe, data is coming in yeah. better than expectations. Yeah, you saw, um, what was it today, German factory orders were at a, um, what, 19-year um, high, so uh, they're doing very well. Unemployment low. Uh, the unemployment numbers in the U.S. last week, though for some was disappointing, but the rate still went down from 9% mm -hmm. to 8.7%, so it's going in the right direction, despite all the different variations in the internal analysis that you can make. Um, M&A is doing well. In Canada, you have capital raises um, that are being uh, taken up. Um, the one thing that you can see in this is the yield. They're generally y um, yield products in terms of the deals. People want to have stability and yield, and it's less about relative performance. So, um, but on the other hand, we have equity correlations that are still high. Um, let's just move away for a second from the VIX which we watch for risk. Let's look at correlations. Despite what VIX is doing, equity correlations remain high, and that's a risk from a stock perspective. Volumes will taper off and trading will become transactional. Uh, what I mean by that is cash flow related, um, stop, um, um, uh, tax loss selling, um, um, uh, cash flow and an index uh, rebalancing, that sort of thing. So with correlations where they are, there's very little fundamental um, driven trading going on um, and um, and the volatility will remain high um, one trader called this week a hopium filled <laughs> summit week so that just tells us that going into Friday we don't know what will happen um, so I would not uh, put on risky trades for this week if I could help it in any way. Let's talk about the news of the day for a second, how it factors into what you're looking at volatility. Number one, Bank of Canada, interest rates unchanged, but decidedly negative with regards to Europe, but perhaps a little bit more positive when it came to its reading on the U.S. economy and also its read on the Canadian economy. Yes, so interest rates globally are going down. Um, we're expecting uh, the ECB to cut on, uh, on Thursday as well. Um, I don't think there was any real expectations that uh, rates are going to go up in Canada, at least not in the near term. Um, and definitely not in the U.S. I think that uh, um, there is an understanding that the economy, there's no reason to raise rates. We're not, we don't have any runaway inflation or any kind of runaway growth. We just want a little bit by little bit. Um, so uh, cutting um, did not make any sense. Um, uh, there isn't that much more to cut, nor reason. Um, so I think that this is within expectation, and this can provide the backdrop for continued um, uh, consumer um, um, consumer correction or, or what you would call it because the consumer is doing well relatively speaking um, you see some of these metrics in the economy doing better um, than they have lately the financials have come off their lows the home builders have come off their lows the consumer is doing okay so um, rates staying put it's it's uh, as expected and very positive, I think. When I'm looking at uh, another item today is Bank of Montreal. They uh, appear to have missed a little bit relative to expectations. They did not raise their dividend. Uh, you were saying in the break that there might have been some expectation that they would, uh, and you used the term crowded trade as yeah. well. Yeah, so the, um, there was chatter. Um, first of all, we were expecting BMO to report um, of all the banks uh, 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 the best uh, earnings. <laughs> and so um, the miss, um, 
you know, w w whether it was four cents or three cents or six cents, depending on, on who you talk to, it's, it's sort of even more at the gut level because the expectations embedded um, were higher than the actual consensus printed number. Um, in addition, I think there was some expectation that they maybe, if they were going to come out good, um, that uh, dividend was going to uh, be raised. Uh, God forbid they would have cut it. That was not expected. No, no. But if they would have raised it, so that's a bit of a disappointment. It was a disappointment. It was a crowded trade from a long perspective. People piled in in, in BMO more than any other banks. Um, RBC was expected to be the worst and came out okay, and, and the stock price is, is showing that. So I think that today for BMO it's going to be a bit of a disappointment from that perspective and as well. And would you keep it, the, the Royal uh, did not disappoint. Is that the trade to start focusing on now on the long trade? It's been a disappointing performer, Royal e Bank has. Yeah, so I think this all ties in from a trading perspective. Um, this, I would leave it alone because we have a very headline uh, filled uh, ri uh, risky week. I don't think you need to be there for the trade. From an investment perspective, really you have to take a view on the financials. Um, there are those out there that believe that the financials have now sort of become a low growth um, type of, yeah, steady dividend um, payout dull. Uh, dull. trade. A little dull, um, but that you can have a little bit of um, uh, beta and dividend if you go, say, for example, into the REITs or energy or that sort of thing. So financials are definitely not out of the woods. and. Um, there is some risk there, despite the fact that they beat. Okay, Diana, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for Always having me. Always great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Diana Avador, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital. Quick break now. After that, we'll highlight some stocks. To put